So I'm going to spend just a few minutes thinking about a few of these concerns that have been expressed at various points and talking about some of the things that are coming up uh, in the next few months uh, to address some of these and then looking a little further into the future to a challenge that I think uh, GBIF and its partners need to address. Uh, so three concerns and some comments on each of them. A particular uh, aspect of GBIF at this point is that we bring together sources of evidence that somebody somewhere has recorded a particular species. Many of the underlying data sets that from which these data come include much more information. They may be part of a carefully structured surveying program which allows statistical inferences beyond just placing a dot on a map and knowing that the species was found. Uh, there may be indications of abundance as number of individuals or dry mass or uh, area covered. There may be uh, some ability to infer the, f um, the significance of the absence of species in particular samples. This information today is not visible through the GBIF network, even though many of the source data sets include it. And so this concern that uh, GBIF does not yet provide uh, something richer than evidence of the presence of a species has been something that uh, we've wanted to address for some time. If you look at a uh, GBIF map today, this is actually a view, a fairly random view, of uh, a group of species from uh, a part of, of Sweden, what you see are points on a map. But in fact, if you dig deeper into the data, you may actually find that some of these points represent multiple species recorded on a particular day and in a particular place. And very often, the source data will include more information, as here, that for these three butterflies, there was a single planned recording event, a butterfly transect uh, covering one kilometer, and the number of individuals of each of these species recorded in this place. GBIF is looking to extend its current Darwin core set of properties for mobilizing the basic what, when, where information to start bringing in more level, more information at this level of detail. We understand that this is not everything that is included in an ecological data set or a well-structured field survey. Nevertheless, this level of detail, relatively simple, will allow many additional discovery purposes and uses through the GBIF network. Imagine that the team that um, carried out this particular survey revisited on multiple months and again counted butterflies in a consistent way. They may also have carried out similar surveys at other sites. And behind all of these dots, there is actually much more of this structure, if only we expose it. For other purposes, uh, as here with a fish survey, there may be uh, further data that follows a different method uh, and uh, may count individuals or may have some other numerical measure of relative abundance, uh, some other indications of the level of effort uh, that's associated with the sampling. That means that some things will be much more comparable than others, but nevertheless, even within each of these activities, there will be interesting information about the degree to which different species were represented. And most importantly, by enabling uh, those who download GBIF data or those who build tools based on GBIF data services to see this pattern more clearly, we will be able to support a range of uh, discovery and comparison services, uh, which would allow statistical analysis much more readily of the, uh, those, those differences that take place. And this is fundamental for GBIF to become uh, an even more significant and relevant tool for monitoring and assessment purposes 
and for the activities of organizations such as, such as IPBES. Um, a second area of concern is that the data that are published through the GBIF network very often seem to be inadequately connected with the uses around the network. It can be very hard for a data publisher to know how their data have been used. Uh, GBIF tries to monitor uh, research publications in particular, and you'll see some of the outcomes of that monitoring activity through some of the stories that are presented and some of the presentations later in the day. But we're not aware of all uses, and in many cases, uh, the citation of data from GBIF is relatively hard to achieve uh, and often doesn't occur, even in publications that may have been heavily based on data from GBIF partners. And coming from the other side, researchers find it often quite difficult to communicate with the, uh, the publishers of information to help them to correct issues that they may have detected uh, within the data. In the next few months, uh, GBIF is going to be working uh, on something that we've been discussing for some time to ensure that every data set within the GBIF network is associated with a digital object identifier, a DOI. DOIs are the standard tool within published research literature for referencing publications and for tracking the usage and, of publications uh, as resources within, uh, within future research. We plan to ensure that data sets represented by metadata and behind that the associated data can themselves be referenced through the same framework. We believe that this will greatly simplify the process uh, for those who have used GBIF data to give appropriate reference and to improve the traceability of their research results. In connection with this, we're also focusing on improving the, uh, the stability of identifiers on individual records within data sets, and the combination of the two should enable us to refer much more stably to any individual data record within the GBIF network. So let's see how this might work. Here we have three data publishers. Uh, the one on the left is using the version of the GBIF Integrated Publishing Toolkit that is just being, uh, being released. This version now supports direct communication with a national DOI issuing service. So if the data publisher has already uh, developed an account with such a service, the IPT can automatically allocate a DOI to their data set. In other cases, and this already happens with some of our publishers, uh, the publisher may have uh, another mechanism institutionally or through other channels to allocate DOIs, and they may be associating one through the metadata within their data set. Yet in other cases, publishers may not be ready or may not have the, uh, the tools uh, or the accounts to do this. As GBIF indexes their data, in gbif.org, we are collecting identifiers that are supplied with the metadata, including those from the IPT. And this enables us, when we subsequently refer in any way to data from these sources, to include the DOI within that. In the next few months, for all data sets for which there is no existing DOI, GBIF has a relationship now with DataCite Denmark to be able to allocate digital <coughs> object identifiers. And we will assign uh, interim DOIs, at least, for all of these data sets. By interim, I mean that uh, we will keep these DOIs in existence, as is perfectly normal for a DOI. But if, at a subsequent time, the publisher reaches the, uh, the technical point where they want to start making use of their own institutional, organizational, or other DOIs for their data resources, we have the ability to make use of both identifiers and to treat theirs as the preferred one. 
the effect of this will be that from the standpoint of GBIF, every data set within GBIF will have an identifier that can be used to trace back to information on the data. In many cases, it will just link back to the data publisher's own uh, pages uh, in, in connection with the data set. In other cases, it may la re lead back to a GBIF landing page with all the metadata and information from which then we have various pointers on to the original data source, which may be a zip file, it may be uh, a tapir or a digger or bio case provider, for example. So let's turn this around and think about it from the researcher's side. A researcher may issue uh, some kind of search against the gbif.org data to retrieve records of interest for some purpose. And as today, we will create a download file. GBIF downloads are presented as a zip file containing the data, containing citation information, uh, further metadata, uh, and information about the various data, uh, data sets from which the data have been organized. From now on, we will be adding another DOI for each of these searches. The DOI is really associated with this search and the results that it returns. So when the researcher gets back that data set, the citation information will now include explicitly DOIs for every data set referenced, and in addition, a DOI that refers to this search result. Any reference to that DOI will return a page with information about the GBIF search and about the parameters that were applied, the data sets that were returned. For as long as GBIF is maintaining the, uh, the download data sets on its servers, uh, and at the moment we have uh, been doing that for a year and we still haven't filled those servers, so there is some window there, it will also resolve directly to the data downloaded. We recognize that it's unlikely GBIF is just gonna keep uh, retaining every single search that anybody does against the GBIF network uh, in perpetuity, but uh, we believe that this will give a window for researchers to flag to us that they wish certain data sets to be preserved, or alternatively, to deposit them themselves uh, in some archive. So when a researcher makes use of data, they typically clean it up, uh, make some changes, uh, and they may choose then, uh, through another uh, avenue that GBIF is exploring, in particular with data one, they may pl place it in a repository for more persistent storage. GBIF now has uh, an agreement to become a data one member node, which will mean that we have redundant storage for data sets sta uh, stored in this way. And this would again be allocated a digital object identifier. When the researcher publishes their paper, this means that they can include uh, a resolvable link certainly to the downloaded data, uh, a single DOI, which will actually resolve to a full list of all the data publishers. And also, optionally, uh, a digital ob object identifier for any clean data. If we put all this together, we have a situation in which for the researcher and the reader, there is much greater connectivity between the published research and the underlying data, including potentially much richer data uh, held in the original data publisher's data sets. There is also the fact that by these connections, and particularly if each record has a stable identifier for itself, we have the ability to recognize that any clean data can be treated within GBIF as a reference data set version of some of the information within the network, which gives data publishers the chance potentially to benefit from the uh, suggested corrections and improvements that may be made there and also for GBIF more broadly to highlight uh, more um, reviewed data sets that uh, have been put together by researchers for particular purposes, and also to uh, explore opportunities to use this information uh, to feed into fitness for use assessments 
for various uh, aspects of underlying data. The two things I've just talked about are the sample-based data extension and the use of digital object identifiers are expected uh, in the next few months. Uh, we already have work underway with many partners on the sample-based data and digital object identifiers. Uh, everything I've just shown you, uh, most of it will be in place by the end of this year. Some of the work around repositories we expect to be in the first half of 2015. <coughs> the last thing I want to talk about is more of a grand challenge for us all. Um, some of the things I've talked about will help us to connect our data better. But still, I think we're not doing the best possible job of making it efficient for taxonomists uh, and other biologists, ecologists, uh, knowledgeable citizen scientists to help us to improve the global data pool. We're not making use of all relevant expert knowledge. If we think about the data that is coming through GBIF, which is broadly today the, the greenish uh, circles in this diagram, ovals, there are other pieces of information that some of our partners are, are mobilizing. Sequence data, information about species concepts and names, uh, relevant biodiversity publications, just as a few examples. We're going to put trait data and all sorts of other things on this. And there are a set of very clear connections between these things that we all understand and have attempted to put into various data models. We need to agree between ourselves, between GBIF and Species 2000, uh, the Barcode of Life, the Biodiversity Heritage Library, many national and international projects, Encyclopedia of Life, um, INSDC, GenBank, etc. We need to be thinking about, at a high level, how the various kind, kinds of data we're organizing connect with each other. Individual data sets, as held by different organizations, represent various subsets of this bigger picture graph. And what GBIF is doing today is really searching data sets to find the bits that fit into the pattern it's looking for, the evidence of species having been recorded in time and space. Catalogue of Life, Species 2000 and ITIS's work with, with all of their partner GSDs, is putting together a picture of taxon concepts. They're trying to catalogue uh, the, the species concepts, including the, syn the, the ones that have now been synonymized, uh, and trying to put together a useful global data set for that. And what we end up with is a network where we have GBIF, we have Catalogue of Life, we have other partners working on various aspects of data integration, but we're all doing various bits of it. We're overlapping. GBIF is trying to stitch together the parts of the names and classification that are not included in Catalogue of Life. Uh, others are doing the same thing. I know many of you uh, spend time in your informati informatics systems really putting in uh, placeholders for things that are not yet in Catalogue of Life. The vision uh, we need to have, and one that I know is shared by Species 2000, for example, is much more of a shared ecosystem of catalogues that we're developing. GBIF is in many ways a catalogue of instances of specimens and a catalogue of instances of evidence for species occurrence around the world. There are databases which are catalogues of names. There are certainly Species 2000 and many other sources which can feed into a global concept, tax on concept catalogue. If we start standardizing on a common model for these things, and we've certainly been involved in, in thinking some of this through, and we need to be carrying on that work in the next, next year, we can address some of our issues differently. Right now, if GBIF uh, receives information, which may include a reference uh, to a specimen, but the only information about the classification of that is in the form of a scientific name, we do our own interpretation of the scientific name. If it's slightly oddly formatted, we'll do our cleaning of that. We'll deal with any oddities in the apparent classification, and we'll then work out where to fit that thing within an overall hierarchy. But others are doing the same thing, and we may not be coming to the same conclusions. It's unpredictable. What I would like in the future 
would be for us to get to the point where we have a single place where Species 2000, GBIF and all other partners are building that information together. And when GBIF discovers a new species with a name like this, we invoke that catalog to give us back the concept to use. And if it's a new one, it gets added as part of that process. What we really need is a whole series of connections like this. And we've started thinking about what that would mean as a world in which we take on a very clear focus for particular classes of data and try and catalog all the instances and provide clear services for resolving them and for uh, adding new entries where needed. One of the other things I would flag here is that if we do this, these catalogs also very naturally become the point at which we can all work together to curate this information, to provide annotations and, and suggested corrections, and to build workflows and uh, decision processes for the point at which we decide that, in fact, this specimen is really one of this species. Many of the problems that we hear reported can be addressed in this way. And I think we, as an organization, need to think together about how to move into the future in partnership with those other, many of them GBIF um, participants already that are working in these areas, to build a much more interconnected world. We're on the way, we've done a great deal, and we're going to need to do a lot more. And I really encourage you all to help us think these things through.